And the emotional response to love is usually the result of a show of affection or favor. And these seem to be the emotions with which we start life. Then as we grow up, many everyday things and social situations become associated with these primary stimuli, partly by a process called conditioning. And so many things and people cause us to respond emotionally. Welcome to the Rondo Show podcast, episode what, 122. It's your yes, boy, sir. Rondo the Kid. I'm here with Hacker Ace. Hacker Ace, he back. The Ghost Ace. Ghost Ace. Ghost Ace. Ghost Ace. They missed us last week. Why? Why they miss us, man? What the fuck? What the fuck happened, man? You talking hey, about me? Tell them, tell, them, tell them what you did, man. Tell them what you did. Listen, man. I did a lot of cocaine. And I <laughs> I fucking couldn't get any more for like a couple weeks because of some situations that people were going through that they couldn't really be there. Oh, but, but um, you know, we're back at the cocaina. You know what I'm saying? Like for all the kids out there. Hold up, man, hold, up, hold, up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You're yeah. not telling me that our friendship I'm, went awry because you ran out of coke. Nah, man, it's, it's more complicated than that, bro. Like, fucking, I took the LSD, like, you know, five years ago, bro, and I'm still fucked up in the head from that shit, bro. Like, I can't, like, you know, this might sound weird, you know, to, to people watching this, like, oh, what the fuck is wrong with him? But, like, to be honest, like, bro, like, fucking, like, fucking, <laughs> bro, like, I fucking, I took the LSD, I drank, I did coke, I smoked weed, I was, I was you know, I was doing all types of shit at the same time. And, um, you know, some events happened in my life that were, you know, violent and um, um, and mistrusting individuals and uh, fucking, you know, getting robbed. And I was about to say, you just so basically you were robbed and now you don't. Right. Uh, right. And, um, you know, taking LSD right after a traumatic event, I wouldn't call it, you know, traumatic. I ain't you no know, fucking pussy, but, you know, um, fucking um, like when something happens like that, something violent or. You know, get your ass beat or something, or you know, by like someone does some sketchy or something. You know, you take LSD right after that, bro. You're gonna be thinking about that the whole time. Like, how could I have prevented that? Why did that happen? Um, you oh. know, where do I? Go? How do I? How do I move forward in the future? And um, you know, I'm not ashamed of getting robbed, bro. I've told many people. I've told all you know everyone I know. Like, yeah, bro, I fucking robbed a couple times, bro. Like, I could control that shit, bro. Anybody can get robbed. I don't care who you are, where you're from. You know, like fucking. Um, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for me, I got robbed because, um, you know, really, like, you know. It, it, <laughs> you were swagging. <laughs> oh, like, like fucking, listen, I was at my friend's house, um, you know, in Southern Maryland, and we were doing dabs. We were smoking weed. We were taking bivans, eating edibles, you know, super fucked up. And I was like, I didn't have a ride home. And I was like, yo, my friend said I couldn't spend the night that night. I was like, yo. Listen, bro, like, I will spark up if you drive me home. This motherfucker said, yeah, I got you. And, huh? Sparking up. Like, smoke some weed. I'll, I'll spark him up. Like, I'll smoke a J with him. I'll smoke a joint with him. I'll get him, I'll get him, high. I'll get him high if he picks me up and drives me home, which is like a five-minute drive. And um, he shows up in his car. I'm not saying no name because, you know, I'm not a snitch, man. You know, I can get robbed and not snitch on motherfuckers. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a civilian. I'm snitching on your ass if you rob. <laughs> Don't rob, rob, I'm snitching. <laughs> um, so fucking, um, you know, I was super fucked up, you know, and then I smoked another, another blunt, bro, super high, bro, and that was their mission, you know. When I hopped in that car, they were super quiet, bro, like super quiet. Like he had a friend with him, and I knew this dude, and then I was supposed to be cool with this dude, you know. I knew him through some friends, you know. And, um, you know, the dude, you know, that I know, I've known since elementary school, bro, like middle school, elementary school, you know, like, um, and we were like drug buddies, you know, so, you know, with that being said, anything could go wrong, but me, you know, um, I, you know, through my life, you know, I was, you know, I'm only 24, so, you know, as a kid, you know, you know, life isn't, um, 
as dangerous as it is when you're an adult. I mean, it could be, but you know, for instance, no one gives a fuck. Once you become an adult, bro, nobody gives a fuck about you, bro. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, people, sucks. people, Fucking, uh, uh, people, you know, people pander. People lie and act like they care about adults. When people, I can't read what you said. Like, bro, his connection fucked up. His connection fucked up, y'all. He gonna. <laughs> <laughs> nah, go ahead. I'm like, um, for instance, like. Um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. You know, back to what I was saying. Um, saying nobody back to what I can remember. What I was nobody gives a fuck. Right, right. Yeah. Um, you know, and me being an adult, like, I don't feel no different. I mean, I feel, I feel like I'm 15, bro. Like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it real. Like, where I still feel like I'm 15, bro. Like, I, yeah, I have okay, limited, life, I have limited life experiences, and from you know, institutions, um, hospitals, and jails, and you know, limited life experience. So, you know, I come out and oh, uh, like, you know, all we want is love, bro. That's all anyone wants. And like, um, you know, once you turn a certain age, it's like people, you know, life is hard let on me, a man. Let me, let me stop you for a second. Mm-hmm. We got all the way here, right? From what the fuck mm-hmm. happened. You know what I mean? Like, let me, can I say it yeah. from my perspective? I feel like, um, we did, you know, we had a pod, we, we, you know, we agreed we was going to fucking come back, do this shit again at a certain time. I was just getting closer to the time. You ain't really, like, you be disappearing. I don't like that shit. Like, people disappear, you know what I mean? And I'm a, a big communicator and shit, and I just believe that. Right. Yeah, and well, I'm sorry about that. I've been doing that hold shit. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, go ahead. If anything supposed to work out and we supposed to be doing this shit, you know, it's going to have to be communication and shit. So, Right. Um, right. That's like the first red flag in my mind. Like, damn. Like, okay, is he really trying to do this? This is the shit I hear. Niggas get on mm. my podcast and be like, "Yo, I'm buying it. Yo, this, yo, this shit lit. Yo, I'm about to do this shit. I can do this mm-hmm. every day, every day." And it's like, I don't want to make the shit that I really like and commit my life to this shit. I don't want it to become a joke to people and like a fucking thing that they can just hop in, hop out, hop in, hop out. Like, right. I put so much right. work into this shit. And it's so much behind, like, if, if if you're doing this shit with me, I put shit behind you, and I put energy into it, and it's like, um, I just, I have a question, I guess. What do you mm-hmm. think, what do you think, um, like, how much, like, uh, I don't know, like, do you, I don't know, I, I told you this off, off mic, that, off camera, that, like, um, mm-hmm. In my mind, I was just like, he got to go through his shit, you know what I mean? He having one of those moments where he might be paranoid. He might be thinking, I'm against him right now. Um, and I feel like that's, that shit happens from doing podcasts. And also, because mm-hmm. podcasting is weird, bro. It's mm-hmm. like, it's low-key weird. It can feel, it can, it, it's an element of paranoia to it that I can understand somebody having around it, you know, especially after doing it because in the moment it can feel way different than it feel after or when you on the outside looking in. But um, I, like you know, because like you're my brother and shit, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it hundred with you, bro. Like, fucking, I don't, I've been struggling, you know, like not only with drug use, but with a little bit of mental health issues. You know, it, I mean, my mental health issues aren't as bad as they used to be, and I'm not saying like, you know, I'm schizophrenic or anything like that. Like, I've been diagnosed with that shit. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I, was diagnosed, what, let, I was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, but um, you know, um. Fucking, you know, being robbed and being an institution, all that shit, bro. Like, to me, it's crippled me, bro. That shit's crippled me, destroyed me, bro. All the shit I had to also go through. In, in and so, and in your relationships, like, you, and your ability to form relationships. And my question is really only leading to, like, how much do you think your relationships and your, uh, your, um, just how much can you take yeah. before it's, like, you know, too late? It got to the point with me, like, um, like I had problems. Like I was so fucked up in the head after doing all these drugs and this lace shit and all that shit. And you know, I come home, my dad looks at me and just starts crying, bro. Like this, he's fucked up, bro. Like, you know, I was skinny, really skinny. Like I put on some weight now, but like I was skin and bone, bro. Like 
I didn't leave my apartment, bro. I was so paranoid, bro. And the more and more I got in depth with this computer cybersecurity shit, bro, the more paranoid I got. And um, it got to the point where, like, I took yeah, LSD and I was the with. Phone. Set the phone down. <laughs> Set the phone down. You <laughs> yeah, I fucking took LSD and I was with one of my good friends, bro. Huh? Set the phone down. You were shaking it when you was. Oh, was I? Sorry. Um, I want you to talk. You know, after. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Is it better? Um, I took LSD with a friend, you know, after getting out of institutions and getting robbed. And, and what happened was is I disassociated with, like, I was, um, like, I couldn't, I couldn't interact with people anymore. It was like, bro, like, everything I do, I feel like I'm going to fool myself. Everything I do, like, after the LSD, I was so fixated on my problems. What's wrong with me? How can I fix this? And, you know, instead of always... You know, instead of using that to find a solution, bro, I got more in depth and more, you know, I was so fucked up in the head, bro. Like, I still am from all the shit in my life. Um, you know, a lot of shit I don't talk about. Um, and it got to the point where um, I just, I couldn't talk to people, bro. I couldn't look people in the eye. And every time I talked to someone, bro, like, I felt was like... Was it a fear thing? Or was it more like just... Um, it's it's did, it, you like fear, you, did you feel like you were um, in reality? I'm confused. Like or were fear you, played a big like, part in it. I was scared of I was scared of what people thought of me because I took LSD and I just I fell apart, bro. My ego died and I was just like, you know what? Because what happens I'm, is I noticed from the outside looking in, it's like even when somebody does accept you, you don't know how to mm -hmm. understand that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um I just like got to the point I just couldn't talk to people anymore. I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to isolate. I didn't wanna I didn't want to go outside, bro. I just want to get high. And sit in my room and just be away from the world, bro. Because I felt like I couldn't deal with the world anymore. I couldn't deal with people. I couldn't deal with these all these personalities and um. You it's know, a lot all being a person, bro. That's the other thing that I feel like the most underrated thing on earth is being a person. Like how hard being a person actually is, and the stress it it it, it actually it actually comes with just having a brain that works. You know, have a function having an, having a functioning brain can take a mm -hmm. toll on you if you don't know how to really deal with that you know <laughs> just being a person so imagine doing it while on substances while under so much pressure and scrutiny from your parents on top of the system and all the drama and all the shit that comes with being in that shit you know what i mean it doesn't do anything but reinforce paranoia fear and anxiety you know right and um like another part of it was you this know is why you gotta have friends that it's like real unconditional love i, I said right like, Jokingly on that last pod, I was like, get you some friends that won't mm -hmm. go on the run when y'all about to move in together. And yeah. but the the second part to that is also get you some friends who are still fucked with you even if that's what you did. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like And I I, 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 wanna I, I gotta allow you to be human at the same time. I can't put part of what's making you go crazy in your head is the insane pressure that it is on these relationships and on friendships and on pleasing people. Right, bro. Job. So like, I understand that I had to, when, especially when dealing with you, I have to remove that to allow you the space to get comfortable with this and maybe not be comfortable with it. You got to have the room to not be comfortable and then learn how to be comfortable. You know what I mean? So I'm, I don't yeah. put no pressure on you in that way. I do. Yeah. I don't, you, you know, you don't I mean apologies, accept it, you know, all that type of shit. But you do like, I'm never like the friend who will enable somebody to just um, throw their life away, but also I'm not going to pressure you to be uh, uh, healthier than you actually are. I, uh, uh, the goal is to be healthier, but if you're not there yet, you ain't there yet, and I can't, I can't. Me shit you for not being there ain't going to make it <laughs> no better, bro. <laughs> Between me and you, bro, like. The hardest part, the hardest part of all this shit, bro. Like, fuck my me, feelings, you and the pot, huh? Between me, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Between me, you and the pod, like, um, like the hardest part about all this wasn't the fact that I was hurting myself, bro. I'm hurting the people around me. I've lost so many friends, bro. Like friends from childhood and all types of shit because fucking I was so fucked up in the head, bro. That I was harming all the people around me because I wasn't I wasn't being hold on, hold on. myself. I was. Hardest part, part about everything is what? 
the hardest part about you know the, the the mental stuff I'm dealing with and this stuff isn't the fact that I'm hurting myself and that I'm becoming very, very unhealthy. It's the fact that the people I love, the people I care about, are being affected by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, but that's you just know, and I realize thing, though, that's another I part realize, of being human though. That's another part of being human, bro. Don't let nobody ever trick you into feeling bad for growing and having growing pains. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna be perfect twenty four seven. And at the end of the day, whoever's there in the end, you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? It's like a true sign because it's like, like I said, when you get married, you agreeing to be with somebody in the good and in the bad times. I'm not saying we married or nothing, bro. No. But we married in, in in brotherhood. We we you know we bonded in in blood. So it's like through trauma and experience. We bonded through hard. I was about to say, hardship. and experiences, that, you know, not only hardships, but the great times too, the good times. Yeah. Um, when you do that, though, that's an unconditional uh, thing. That's an unconditional mm-hmm. thing. And it's, it's, it's like, you know, I go, uh, you know, the times you don't text me, bro, it don't mean that, you know, oh, um, I just don't. I don't believe in the fact that I believe that it worked both ways. Like you, I could, I could text you too. <laughs> right. But we, we got. We each got put in our. We each, both of us got put in our fifty percent. Exactly. Exactly. It's never. And now that we're having this conversation, bro. I'm like you can, and I feel like you can kind of understand, and I can, you know, be open and um and and shit like that. You know, it makes it a lot better. It makes it easier for me to interact with you. You know. Not saying that you're hard to interact with or anything. But I don't but. believe this. What I don't believe men have. I don't believe nobody really has it, but men especially. I don't believe we have safe spaces. I don't believe we it's, have it's, a space where we can be ourselves and it don't cost us nothing. Right. Yeah. Like, I know. Always on edge. Always under pressure of losing something or not gaining or gaining something that we don't want to gain, or the pressure of like like that's why I hate it having an addictive personality because it made me feel like I couldn't just enjoy life like everybody else because I got to worry about getting addicted. Like everybody right. else could just drink, 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 and that, that shit fine. Everybody can eat, smoke, do anything. But if I do it, I got to watch myself because I don't like that. You know what I mean? I want to just be normal. I want to just be like everybody else. But at the same time, I got to like be in reality of what's going on. Like I'm at a different mm-hmm. point in my life where I just, I got kids, man. I can't be a, uh, Feeding my demons, bro. Yeah. And even if I do feed them, it's nowhere near how I used to feed them when I was single and out here by myself. Mm-hmm. So I also look at it like, bro, you going through shit. You going through shit because you alone. Like I ain't trying to push you to be with no girl. But you get definitely as a man, you get in way more trouble when you single than you do when you. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, bro. It's just. Well, I haven't, I haven't, you know, I had a, I haven't had a solid girlfriend since I was 22, and that even, even then, like, I didn't like the girl. Like, I'm gonna be honest, bro. Like, I don't think she's watching this. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. Listen, listen, listen. listen I, I didn't, I didn't even like the bitch, bro. Like, I thought was, she was not my type. I did not like the bitch, bro. You know, we gotta was, stop doing that. We gotta wrong, stop bro. doing that. But we gotta huh? stop doing that. We gotta stop doing that. We gotta stop being yeah. girls that we don't really like, bro. Did you tell her you loved her or yeah. something? Oh yeah, bro. I didn't love her, <laughs> but um, that's fucked up. But I, I'm working on it, bro. I'm working on becoming a better person. I'm glad person, we having but, this conversation. You know, sometimes. Uh, listen, listen, listen. Huh? Listen to I'm glad mm-hmm. we having this conversation because you a part of the damn problem. <laughs> part of the problem, man. You a part of why we got these women out here. <laughs> can't be we nice. Got pimp, can't, can't, be nice <laughs> can't be nice yeah, to because boys. they think it's love. Yeah, but um, yeah, it is fucked up. Issues, of course, but I'm also yeah. saying like you can't lie. Like you know that man. Do you believe in karma? Oh yeah, yep. You believe in karma? Right. You out here telling bitches you love them, and then don't want to get your heart broke. You know, I'm gonna be honest. Like, you know, I'm not trying to make it all. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer the question yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want it to be all, all sympathy chase. Oh, I feel bad for him, whatever. Answer the question. Answer the question. All right, all right. All right. So you out so here, like, girls have broken my heart. You out here. You out here 
You said you believe in karma, and you out here lying to women, telling them you right. love them and you don't. And you don't um, get your heart broken at the same time. That is hypocrisy. Yeah. Um, you you got to realize with, with dating, this is how I look at dating, bro. It's an ecosystem, bro. It's like, it's like if I pour out this fucking bottle of bleach in this lake, right? Mm. Why would I go fishing in that lake hoping to get some healthy fish? Right, 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 right. Yeah. Bitches yeah. like shit. So how the fuck am I going to have some good pickings? Yeah. I'm looking for the one, bro. Like, oh, I, yeah. uh, you know, girl, you know, you know, girl, you know, girlfriends, bro, always fuck, you know, bro, like, over and over again, bro, like, cheating on me, doing shit. And it got to the point where I was like, you know what, fuck these bitches. I'm going to turn into a fucking man whore, bro. I'm going to start pimping these bitches, bro. Like, that was... They, the, they, they played the game on you. They played the, the, the game. That's the game. That's the game. That's the game. You know that's the game, right? You know that's the game, right? The women, you know, they be, they be playing you, the game, they bro. They you, bro. You can't, you can't fall for the game. So this is the game. Let me tell you the game right now. This is the game. The game is, you're a good guy. Okay, th- let's say this. Let's say let's set up the game. Let's say you're a good guy, right? You're a good guy, but you don't want to be a bad guy, of course, because don't nobody want you to be a bad guy. The girls don't want the bad guy. That's what they say, but the, everybody knows the bad guy got all the bitches. But anyway, that's another conversation. Mm-hmm. So this is the game. The game is... Um, I want to get as close to the line as possible of some shit I can't imagine. But if it's too real and it gets uncomfortable in that moment, I need to pull back and I need to be safe instantly. I need to be able to know that you can pull back. So mm-hmm. if a girl like see you go off on somebody and she tell you she turned on by that, and you go off on her, might be different. You see what I'm saying? Might be, <laughs> might be different. Rough sex, buddy. <laughs> so look though, but look though, huh? it's the game. The game is. This is a game for any celebrity, too. They mm-hmm. run up on you and they antagonize you. They say all the triggers to get you to want to hit them. And when you hit them, you go into jail. You feel me? And they suing you. Yep. So with the women, I feel like they tricked you, Chase. They, 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 this is what they told you. They said, they, they, said, game they said, um, nah, you ain't good enough. Nah, you ain't good enough. And you took that and said, all right, bitch, if a good guy ain't good enough, then I'm about to just be a bad guy. <laughs> they got you though. They got you though because now they can say, "Look, you're a bad guy. This is why I ain't fucking with you." So it's a, you gotta you gotta learn a, ahead of time to be like a good guy and stay through. Learn that when they shitting on you, it's just because you are a good guy. Good guys get shit on. The, the good guys finish last with the superhero. Every superhero movie, when the cops show up, what the cops do? They shit on the superhero, don't they? They be trying to lock the superhero up, and he was trying to save the damn day. Yeah. The superheroes, yeah. the Incredibles movie was real, bro. The Incredibles show you the struggle of being great. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. You can be great all day, but don't let them turn you into a villain just because they shitting on your greatness. And I feel like that's what happened with me. You know what I mean? So I'm just giving you yeah. right. So we can relate on that, bro. Like I did turn evil for a little bit, bro. Like, but I'm working on, it, bro. That's not who I am. I'm not evil, bro. I'm a good person. And there's nothing wrong with being a good think person. About this, like, why, why are you evil? Why are you? Why are you? Why are you? Why are you changed? You can't. You technically changed for somebody. Yeah. And I they know where to be found. You don't even know what's going on with this person at this point in time. But you, you changed your whole lifestyle. And I'm not saying you, but men, we do this. That's why I said we got to stop what we doing. We got to stop misleading people. We got to stop changing who we are for people, bro. If you stayed the same. You're missing. Yeah. You've been here by now. So now all you got to do is get back on your shit. Once you get back into a pattern, a groove, a, a, a long term consistency of following through with your heart, bro, you on she on she gonna pop up, bro. That's how I right, do. Right, right, right. Then yeah. you gonna be like, damn, I, know, I gotta stop again. Then you gonna realize it's her. You be like, oh, all right. <laughs> oh, another thing, bro. Like, like, like. I don't even want to say this on the pod, but mm-hmm. oh, there's this girl, bro. I like so bad, bro. Like, I. I fucking dated that girl when I was younger and shit and, and whatnot. But like, bro, I just, I think I accepted the fact that I've changed and that um, like we are two separate, diff- two totally different people now. Like she's a really, you know, good girl and, you know, I'm doing cocaine. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, you know, See, like, I don't know. Thing, though, like, I don't know. I'm gonna let you talk. Finish what you're saying. Um, like, Man, that shit don't matter if you ask me. 
I feel like uh, a girl, like like if you broke. Well, you you had this. I forgot you had basically had the same experience as me. But you weren't doing cocaine though. <laughs> well, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm about to say this. Is what I'm about to say though, like a good girl will make you change your life. You know, you know, a good girl will make you settle down if you a man whore. A good girl will make you uh, stop smoking cigarettes. A good girl will make you like. Stop doing cocaine. Yeah, like a good girl. <laughs> and when I say a good girl, I don't mean like you scrutinizing the bitch before she. I'm saying you realize you don't want to do this anymore because this person matters more to you. It's enough. Right. You know, it's not a thing where you're like, um, if you was a good girl, you'd be telling me, no, this. Or I would just. No, it's not. She, she's not the powerful one in that sense. You only have the power to stop, you know, and change your life. But somebody mm-hmm. like that great in your, your in your eyes to you mm-hmm. will make you rise to your higher self because you feel like they they are that. They are at that higher place. So you want to rise to that to right. that you know occasion and it's like this is what I feel like when I watch anybody get fucked up or, or do shit with or so called uh waste their life or whatever. I feel like they got to do it enough but until they done. Until you really done. Yeah. Ain't no sense in getting into no relationship, fucking with nobody, and then, like, telling them you're going to be stopping this shit and you ain't. So it's better to just get the shit out your system. <laughs> yeah. Be so solo. Figure your shit out. Like you said, hit your rock bottom. You know what I mean? Get back up. And, um, well, I've been in rock bottom for, like, five years now, bro. I mean, I'm finally starting to come back up. Like, I'm yeah, having good yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, things, yeah, things are finally starting to turn around, but... You shouldn't be worried about no girl. But, uh, or your come up. Yeah. Um, so, once it's you put like, your, you know, Sorry, what are you going to say? No, I was just going to say, life is like a, a... It's a game in the sense where it's the moment you put your all in and you really start working hard, that's when mm-hmm. all the shit that you wanted when you wasn't working... Mm-hmm. But, but you got to know to keep working... To keep that shit popping up, that shit ain't gonna just. If you just stop working and go run to that shit, it's gonna disappear. You gotta keep working, right? Keep Be the persistent. consistency to <laughs> keep that up. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I look at it as spiritual currency. If you believe in karma, then you have to invest in your karma, invest in your good karma. Like just by, I was saying this to my wife earlier. Just being a nice person actually is a selfish thing, because I say this all the time. When I lose, we. I be mad. Why you be mad when you lose weed? Because when you find free weed on the ground, you be happy. So yeah. you, you gotta, you got. I said one time, I was like, why am I looking and hoping somebody drops some weed? I ain't dropped no weed for nobody else to find. So why would it be some weed out there? <laughs> at the smallest, on the small, if you look at it at the, on the smallest level, like at least I can find the weed that I left for somebody else if I need it. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta, you gotta give what you want back. You know, mm-hmm. if you nicer to people in the world, it's gonna make a, lot, a more like, nicer world. It's gonna be nicer people in the world. You gotta set that tone. If you want right. to be nice people, you gotta be nice yourself. It starts with you. So right. it's like, until you really ready to do that, and, and whatever you doing, if it's cocaine, if it's fucking sex, if it's drugs, if it's you know cheating, whatever the fuck it is, man, you gotta fucking. Yeah. You know what I mean. I love my- I, was, I forgot what I was about to say, but I have another thing I'm going to say. Um, like, bro, like, for instance, bro, I've been struggling with, I think the, the drug use is a big problem in my life. Like, because I want to say, like, you know, I, oh, I like how your first episode or this joint or this show, you said, we basically tried to praise drug use. Like, we, like, <laughs> <laughs> we supported it like shit. Like, we was amping it. <coughs> now you're telling me. <coughs> I think my drug use is a problem. You know that the yeah. first episode that that you was on is called mm-hmm. Colombian White. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. And yes, you sir. Like you know, your first, your newfound love. You know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I definitely love cocaine, bro. <laughs> love of your life, but you're saying it's a problem. It's a problem, man. And I've been noticing this recently. It took me a long time to actually say that. Um. You know, I I say it, then I double back and I say it again. I double back and do drugs again. <laughs> like, um, you know, when I took the LSD, like, I'm sorry, I keep talking about LSD, you know, but, um, you know, when I took the LSD, I stopped doing drugs altogether. I said, bro, this is this is not right. I had to I had to take that drug, and I was like, bro, 
I don't, this is ruining my life. It's ruining my relationship with my parents. It's ruining my relationship with my friends. Like, like I can't, you know, like I, I can't be relied on, at, you know, um, and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, um, part of me, like, I just, you know, I guess I want to party till I die. And like, that's, it's fucked up, bro. Like, but maybe there's a death wish. It's really, it's really. Death wish. I'm doing cocaine because I got a death wish. That's some deep shit right there. Hey, man, don't, um, don't kill I'm not going to with you. <laughs> this is like a therapist has to say, if you talk about killing yourself, killing someone else, man. <laughs> therapist, <laughs> nigga, I got to say that too. <laughs> um, um, no, I don't feel, I don't, I'm not going to kill myself or anything, but like, you know, it get life when it damages you so bad. Like, it's like, bro, like, I'm it's just going to It's a self destructive drug. That's what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, like I'm gonna fuck a bunch of hookers, do a lot of cocaine, go to fucking Cuba, smoke some Cuba cigars and shit. Huh? I got a question for you. I'm gonna present mm-hmm. some shit from my old co-host, right? Yep. And I just want you to react to it. I want you to give your your opinion. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, I once had a conversation with him about cigarettes. I was telling him about how easy it is for people to get addicted to cigarettes. And he says he does not believe that people can be addicted to anything. It's just people being weak and giving in to their desires and not telling themselves no and not being – like, he don't believe in that. He don't believe I mean, that you can get addicted to cigarettes. He I tried would- a cigarette. I was around him. I watched him mm-hmm. smoke. I watched him buy packs. I watched him try to smoke, and he just put it down. He didn't want to smoke. And right. he took that as his litmus. Mm-hmm. The fact that everybody capping about this addiction shit. They just want somebody, they just want to feel sorry for themselves. They want people to feel sorry for them. They right. don't got no problem. They really just fucking lazy and don't mm-hmm. work on this. I can see why someone say that. I would say my response to that would be, you know, you know, self discipline is, you know, the prime example of self love, self discipline. And you know discipline is taught in a lot of religions and you know it, it you know you need to be disciplined in life and you know i would say that i'm lacking in discipline and that's you know no other fault but my own um and i'm working on it um you know there is you know physical factors that make you addicted to something you know yeah, i don't think anyone, that's, what I, that's, I don't really, that's what i had to get them to see but go ahead <laughs> yeah yeah um there's there's definitely physical factors you know like once you you know if you do a certain drug and you don't for for a couple of days you don't do it anymore you know your body's gonna okay. crazy, bro. your body is gonna but is everybody's, gonna, everybody's genetic makeup is different that's the thing so like your genetic makeup if you have addiction in your family your genetic makeup is more susceptible to form these right. habits way easier way stronger than maybe somebody like him who doesn't struggle with addiction maybe but this is the thing too i feel like just like that I feel like addiction can skip generations because there's some people who have no desire to do any drugs and everybody around them. Right. right. So it's like, yeah, yeah those are genetics, um, environments, um, life situations. Life calm, exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, um, you know, but, we'll but, be- but we'll be- I, I see what, I see what he's saying as far as self-discipline, but there's, there's a lot more factors that play into it. You know what I mean? It's not just, you know, Discipline, but, but discipline yourself. But would or self-discipline be the answer? Would that help? Would that solve the issue? If you just had self-discipline, if that's all you had was self-discipline, mm-hmm. would it be enough? You said it's the ultimate form of self-love. Would that be enough to not be addicted to to anything? Having self-discipline? That's the answer to addiction. Is that the solve? Having self-discipline. How you solve addiction? <laughs> Open the doors. Self-discipline. Sorry, I'm moving right now. What did you say? Self discipline and um and you know do you self yeah can you can you cure addiction with self discipline um you know I think it's possible but I think there's a lot of factors that play into it and you, physical, not, like you you gonna run into that physical aspect and I think that's where you need support you know what I mean because if you have like my brother I'm gonna just say this on the pod man my brother mm-hmm. recently you know. You know, he's been struggling with alcohol addiction, and he tried to um, stop drinking and on his own without going to the, you know, a hospital or checking himself in the facility because he has trauma just like me and you. And mm-hmm. 
you know, he actually, it didn't go well for him health-wise because, <coughs> you know, those withdrawals can cause seizures and, Oh, yeah, yeah. Alcohol, yeah. yeah. Things that can happen during those seizures can affect you for the rest of your life. You might not be able to come back from some of that shit. So my brother, um, as of right now, I mean, I know he went to the hospital. He got out. Then he got in a fucking car accident after that. But, you know, um, you know, pray, for my, that. Yeah, pray for my brother and shit and just... I would know, definitely pray for him. Thoughts and prayers. But it's, it's, just, it's just an example of the fact that you can't do it alone, bro. Like, you can't do it yeah. alone. You have to, when it comes to the physical aspect, you're going to need some sort of system that's helping you through that because you could die. You could literally right, yep. die trying to, stop, trying to stop some shit that you're saying. If you listen to these people, if you listen to all these motherfuckers on the internet that love to tell you because they don't have addiction in their family or because they're not addicted to something, that you ain't addicted right. and that you don't need to, mm-hmm. so you don't need that. Don't, don't listen to them. All this self, all this, I think this self-help society is a lot of this bullshit, bro. It's a lot, mm-hmm. it's allowed a lot of scammers to scam people and become false prophets and false gods for people to for the executives that build up a monetization um, mm-hmm. business plan, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. this has been the Rondo Show Podcast, episode 122. Ended in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We about to end it right here. Right. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Follow the Ghost Ace on Instagram. Follow Rondo the Kid on Instagram. Follow the podcast on the official page, Rondo Show Podcast official page. Um, um, yeah, man. This the emotional been... response to love is usually the result of a show of affection or favor. And these seem to be the emotions with which we start life. Then as we grow up, many everyday things and social situations become associated.